next on PIJN News. Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Uber billionaire Michael Bloomberg from New York is trying to buy the election in Florida by paying off the convicted felons fines so they can vote for Joe Biden. Today we interview Jonathan Mosley, an attorney against Bloomberg. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a live interview from Woodridge, Virginia via Skype with a new friend, Jonathan Mosley, who is an activist attorney who has worked with Judicial Watch, has worked with Freedom Watch, has worked with Larry Clayman, who's been a guest on our program. And Jonathan is now active in the election process against Michael Bloomberg, who is apparently breaking the law in Florida by literally paying the fines of convicted felons so that they can vote for Joe Biden. Welcome to the program, Jonathan Mosley. How are you today, sir? Very good, honored to be here. Thank you, uh, wanna help if I can. So I, I'm just hearing uh, the, the headlines about Bloomberg. Did I get the, the summary right or, or tell me what's really happening? That's the, that's the, the brief summary. The details get worse, surprisingly or not. Um, the more you learn about it, the worse it is. You want me to jump in? Yes. Um, the, um, uh, the concept might sound reasonably good, except it's a shame that someone, that people with so much money throw it around for bad and set it for good. But the details get even worse. There is a memorandum that we will be seeking in the lawsuit that we just filed um, from the, the Bloomberg political operations that details all this. And as I was talking to Larry Klayman, Larry Klayman asked me to do some research and help him write this up as a lawsuit. And the more I learned, the worse you can imagine could possibly be said, it's worse in terms of what they're saying. Their memorandum as reported by the Washington Post is that they've identified 32,000 blacks and Latinos, voters or residents of Florida now, right off the bat, why blacks and Latinos? Why are they making it racially discriminatory? But they are. So they've identified 32,000 felons who um, have fines or uh, restitution orders or court fees, and they want to get them to vote. And they say specifically the reason why they want to pay off the fines of these felons is so that it's because they have identified them as likely to vote for Joe Biden. Um, they're, they're just very open about the, the reasons that they're doing it to manipulate the elections. The memorandum as reported by the Washington Post says that um, that, is a, that is a larger margin than the last Republican governor was elected in Florida. So um, the, uh, they believe that if they get, if they get these voters registered, and, and they will vote by a larger margin than the last statewide election that went in favor of the Republicans. Um, so the purpose is very clear here to manipulate the election. Well, let me now, ask a question about that. Um, so, I'm hearing that it is that, that Bloomberg is actually violating Florida law because Florida yes. law says you cannot basically give anybody anything, uh, an incentive, a financial incentive in this case, as an incentive for them to vote uh, regardless of who they vote for, you cannot basically bribe them to become a voter. And B Bloomberg is obviously intentionally trying to do that in violation of Florida law. Could he face any criminal charges himself? Yeah, um, he could. The, it, it, it's one of those things that might sound like a good thing, just to be flippant about it, might sound, sound like a good idea over dinner, over pizza and beer or something, but he is uh, not a popper. He has um, plenty of high-powered lawyers and political advisors. He just ran for president. So he should have consultants who should have looked into this and said, you can't really do that. There are about five different statutes in Virginia that I found doing my research for Larry Klamath that one is um, to pay someone to register to vote. Believe it or not, there's actually a statute on that. I'm amazed how often there is not a statute on something there should be. But there is a, there's a statute, these are criminal statutes. Uh, it's a crime to, to pay someone to register. 
to to pay someone to to, to um, corruptly influence the election is another statute. Uh, to um, to pay to bribe someone who to vote for obviously is a, is a violation. To aid and abet all these things is another uh, violation. And and so um, there was an organization for the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition in Florida that apparently, as far as I can tell, was just innocently helping anybody without any criteria, not trying to achieve a result, just trying to help people get back on track. And so they were doing this. But then Bloomberg came along. He's announced that he's going to spend $100 million in one state, Florida. Now, if you think about the tip, I mean, Senate races, I helped Christine O'Donnell in Delaware, and she blew records by, by raising $7.5 million for one state. This is $100 million in just one state to make sure that Florida goes to Joe Biden, which would pretty much make it impossible for um, Donald Trump to be reelected. On top of that, then he raised another $16 million to target these felons, uh, blacks and Latinos, racially discriminatory pr project, project who, they, who they believe are likely to vote for Joe Biden. So the other thing I'm indicating is that um, it's in the lawsuit is that anyone having their fees paid is going to know who he wants them to vote for because he's spending $100 million in addition um, campaigning for Joe Biden. So they're going to kind of know he paid off my fines and I know who he wants me to vote for. Um, and, uh, and and they, they say, they talk in great detail in the memorandum about why this is a target. And they, they, they talk about I mean, really damning things about how this is going to be cheaper to add votes, not my words, their words, add votes to the Democrat column. Um, it's the, uh, the most cost effective certain way because pretty much all, everybody else is, has, um, has uh, um, made up their mind. So getting these votes, now these are voters who are felons. So they're not eligible to vote. But in, in, in 2018, the voters passed a memorandum, a, a referendum, addendum four, amendment four, and that allowed people to be able to, to become registered to, to vote again if they've completed their sentence. The courts then, including Barbara Lagoa, who's up for consideration, um, decided that that means you have to do everything you can't have something that, that's undone, like you didn't pay your restitution to the victim, you didn't pay your fines, you didn't pay your fees, until you've done everything you haven't completed your punishment. So you can't be registered to vote. That's where we are right now, is that realizing this, a lot of people tried to vote, and the, the court said, no, you have to pay. Because one of the things that, and I, I don't know, we're running out of time here, but one of the things people need to realize or remember is that if, when, when a judge sentences someone for a crime, they can say, well, I, I, I won't punish you for as many years in jail. I'll impose a fine instead. So a fine is often less time in jail if you pay the fine. But these people aren't paying the fine. They're, no. Bloomberg is paying it for them. So it, they're not really bearing the punishment. But the, but the issue is that if they are clear with all of their fines and fees, then they can go and register and vote and they may be able to vote in this election. Yeah, so let's take a short break. Uh, we're gonna have more with Jonathan right after this. I wanna find out if he's going to sue Bloomberg or if he's waiting for the Attorney General of Florida to do so, Pam Bondi, right after this. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that famine would be a sign of the end. And we are now facing a famine of biblical proportions in one of the poorest states in India, where our charity has sponsored up to 259 orphans and children for many years. But now, there are thousands of people starving in the streets because of the unemployment there. And we've been helping widows, like the letter we received from Sanuri, who writes to us and says, I stay with my three children in the slum. I was washing plates in the hotel and earning bread for my family, paying house rent. Suddenly, I lost my income. After hotels were closed by the government, this was a shocking moment for me. Afterward, we could manage eating half a meal a day to manage a scanty ration for longer days. When there was no ration left for my family, I was quietly weeping outside with agony. An unknown fellow came and asked whether I am a widow. I said yes. 
he wrote my name and address and asked me to collect ration from your office. I got that ration with joyful tears. I strongly believe that God helps the helpless during troubled times through benevolent people. You know, the benevolent people she's talking about are you and your generosity when you give through our ministry is actually helping her to see God. Would you please donate today at 866-Obey-God? Again, our phone number, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, and help us supply a matching gift. We've already given up to $10,000 to supply 100,000 meals, and there's somebody out there who could double that gift with one stroke of a pen. Please donate through our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and designate your gift to India Relief. Please give today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Jonathan Mosley, an attorney in Virginia, who is now taking on Michael Bloomberg, a New Yorker, but their battleground is in Florida, where Bloomberg is trying to buy the election for Joe Biden by illegally paying off the fines of convicted felons to make them eligible voters. Welcome back, Jonathan Mosley. Uh, Jonathan, this has all been confirmed by the Washington Post, but you're just, you're, you're not just sitting on the sidelines, you're taking action. You and Claire, Larry Clayman plan to uh, do what in Florida? Are you guys admitted to the bar there? Larry Clayman is. I grew up in Florida. Larry Clayman is a, is a Florida lawyer, a Florida resident, a Florida voter, citizen. And um, we're, um, we filed a lawsuit in Florida um, against the defendants who are doing this and also against the Division of Elections in the Florida Department of State to ask them to not accept these registrations. We're asking for an injunction um, to stop and do this. Because if you think about it, let's say that somebody registers to vote and they shouldn't. Then they vote on November 3rd. You can't find those ballots. There's no way to call those ballots back. They've already been cast. And so um, you know, we have a secret ballot. And so we don't know who they voted for. Um, and so suddenly Joe Biden carries Florida and um, there's no way to undo it. So we're asking for an injunction because <clears throat> at least as, as I put in there to sequester these, these voters, um, so that you can figure out later if their ballot should be counted or not. <clears throat> but, but it has been done. Now, the issue is um, Florida Congressman Matt Gates, great guy, um, he has warned that this is, uh, Bloomberg, this is criminal. He's asked for an investigation. Presumably, they're going to do their job and, and go after that. <clears throat> it would usually be better if government officials would do their job and we wouldn't have to file lawsuits outside of the government Sadly, we, we don't see government usually being very fast or eager or, you know, diligent to do things. So we often feel like we're having to do in the private sector as private lawyers what we wish would be done properly um, to well, the attorney right. general. But, or, but there's another or angle other, on this. Other. Although you guys are filing a private lawsuit to get the election problem and these registrations solved through proper channels. Uh, the Attorney General of Florida, it used to be Pam Bondi, if, if maybe it still is, should be filing criminal charges against uh, Bloomberg himself. If I know he's in New York, but could he be like uh, subpoenaed down to, to Florida to face charges? Yes, that would come under the long arm statute where one's causing an effect in another state. I mean, he's intentionally acting within Florida and, and so that would bring him under the laws of Florida. Um, yes, we hope so. In fact, while we hope for the best and we have to file a valid lawsuit, I, I kind of hope that someone might take some of our work as a first draft, because I think I've dug pretty deep into the statutes and showed the arguments of, of what they should be doing that they might that you might not get just from the newspaper report. So I'm hoping that some people will take the hint. And, and, and take the ball and run with it because they do have more opportunities than a private lawyer does. But, <clears throat> but still, we, we're, we're gonna do what we can do and do our best. We all remember that's, that's uh, the 2000 election in Florida, maybe you were still there with the hanging chads and Al Gore went all the way to the Supreme Court and eventually George W. Bush won Florida by you know, just a, a, a fraction of a hair, a fingernail uh, of the percentage of vote. Um, do you think Florida election departments have kind of got their act in order? Are they doing mail-in ballots now? Or is it gonna be a quagmire like it has been in the past? Uh, I've heard 
um, boast that they have learned a great deal, but I sincerely doubt it. Um, there, there's a lot of reasons. You know, a lot of people have moved from the north down into Florida. There's been a lot of, a lot of problems like that. So my, my concern is that under the current situations, the ability to prove the quagmire may be a lot less than it was in 2000. Um, that with all these things happening, that it may actually be worse, and we might not be able to detect it as my or prove it as, as well as we're able with the hanging chats. Um, so that's going to be a mess. And of course, um, the argument Ted Cruz has made: we can't have a U.S. Supreme Court that's that's deadlocked 4-4 when these when these cases are probably very likely to go up um, the way it did in 2000. But it's it's a it's a very bad situation and. Um, that's another reason you know, I to, had, to confirm. I was, let me say, just we had a family friends, Gene and Jeannie Bauer, who went to vote in 2000 and were told they already voted. Somebody stole their vote by intercepting, by putting an absentee ballot, and, and that was all over the news. They actually had election fraud, and those were two votes that would have gone for Bush wow. that were stolen from them. Well, that's another reason to confirm Amy Coney Barrett so that we have a nine members US Supreme Court because eventually these state lawsuits will probably be appealed. I'm told that Biden has you know, thousands of lawyers all across America now to sue in every state to make sure that Biden votes are counted. There's a different movement, Lawyers for Trump, I think they have a website, Lawyers for Trump, you can Google it, where attorneys like yourself are uh, becoming election judges, senior citizens can become election judges, anyone can be an election judge. We need people to volunteer in your county all across America. Just say, I wanna help watch on election night, make sure there's no fraud, that, that as a Republican or as a Democrat, you can stand in there and watch the votes being counted to make sure they're not done so fraudulently. Let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, Jonathan Mosley has written a book about Trump and COVID after this. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 that we are to pray for kings and all those in authority. Why? So that we can live peaceful lives in godliness and contentment. In that spirit of prayer, we have commissioned 500 commemorative Donald Trump golden coins. Each one says, in God we trust. And we will send this to you for a donation of any amount when you call us right now at 866-Obey-God or give through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. There's a limited number of these commemorative coins, and why would you have this? Well, every time you look at it or feel it in your pocket, we want you to be reminded to pray for our president, especially in this election year, especially with all that's been happening in the news. We need to uplift President Donald Trump in prayer. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God, and for a donation of any amount, listen, we're running out, limited supplies. Call us right now, and we'll ship you a Donald Trump coin. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Jonathan Mosley, uh, an attorney in Virginia who has written a book about Donald Trump and COVID. In fact, that's the website, you can find it. It's trumpcovidbook.com. And Jonathan, what's the premise of this book? Well, this analyzes in detail um, how well Trump handled the COVID-19 threat from overseas. In fact, the subtitle, um, just to be provocative, maybe a little clickbait, maybe to irk some people on the other side, says how President Trump saved 2 million American lives from COVID-19. 
Um, this is kind of, it's interesting because I, I didn't plan to do this. It just kept growing and growing and growing out of attempts to, to disprove uh, false accusations. You know, we live in a time when, when the truth is just, is just in such short supply and we're drowning in so many lies or recklessness. And when you get to the spiritual side of this, it's very, very disturbing. So um, what I ended up doing, I, writing for my own benefit and for another organization, grew and grew and grew, and I tried to make it into a book to try to get it out to help people. I conceive of this as a resource guide, not just my opinion, but um, here I've got uh, 222 footnotes so that people can <coughs> pull out the footnote and prove in their arguments, in uh, calling radio talk show hosts, the hosts calling um, C-SPAN, writing letters to the editor, just talking to family, maybe around thing, you know, well, Thanksgiving will be after the election, but still. Um, so it's hold not up a matter cover. of opinion. It's not up for debate. If you would hold up the book <laughs> cover and read, read the title and subtitle so people can find it on Amazon. If they're not going to your website, trumpcovidbook.com, what's the title and, and mm -hmm. subtitle? And maybe uh, go through the table of contents with us. All right, it's COVID. Hindsight is twenty twenty. It's my sister's idea. It's a play on the 2020 election. It, it's all about the 2020. And the subtitle is how President Trump saved 2 million American lives from COVID-19. The reason being is there was this somewhat suspect study that 2.2 million Americans would die. And that was if the hospitals didn't get overloaded. It could have been worse. We got down to around 200,000, so do the math. Uh, there were, because of Trump's actions, there are 2 million less who died. Now, some people may say, well, I didn't believe that uh, prediction, but that's what the, the other side is arguing from. So it, we have to admit that he did well. But I go through the, the different things. First of all, I say consult a doctor. This is not medical advice, please. Then I, I discuss the Trump save 2 million lives. Then uh, talk about how quickly all the things that people don't understand. And again, focused on footnotes so, you, so there's no doubt about it. What did Trump do and when did he do it? How quickly? Um, he, de he declared a national emergency on January 31, 2020 of all this thing about Bob Woodward's book that he did not, um, you know, he tried to, to downplay it. Well, he downplayed it in reference to, I already declared a national emergency on January 31, 2020. So now I want to maybe calm you down a little bit, but he declared an emergency and I don't know how people didn't catch on to that, um, <laughs> that yes, there's a problem. Um, then we'll talk about when should he have acted because there's a lot of misinformation about when was the earliest warning whether there's a warning from overseas, from intelligence agencies, there wasn't. Uh, the National Center for Medical Intelligence says, no, we did not issue any report. Um, and so you have to look at how late a reasonable president would have known that there was something to pay attention to. Well, I wanna, and, I wanna help you uh, contradict what Bob Woodward's book has been accusing the president of. In February, Bob Woodward, who is the former Washington Post reporter, took down Watergate and Nixon, a famous author. He's saying that he recorded the president in February, not taking this very seriously and saying, well, I don't wanna make people panic. But your point is on January 31st, the president had already declared a national emergency. So the president yes, was yeah. obviously taking it very seriously and Woodward is lying about this. Well, they just, yes, yeah, so they're very confused. A, a, a national public health emergency, was, which is actually different and more relevant. On March 13th, he um, declared a more typical natural disaster emergency, but, this, but that doesn't really apply very much. It was the January 31 that mattered. He talked about it in the State of the Union. The State of the Union. On January 27th, he tweeted about how we're, we're following this very strongly in his language. Um, one of the interesting things that I try to go into about this, it's hard to say, is that just because someone is saying calm down, it doesn't mean they're not doing anything. That is the entire attack of the left. Because Trump said reassuring words, we will get through this, stay calm, there is hope, that must mean he was not doing anything. But I go through that he was doing things. It's possible, um, in fact, better to stay calm and take the problem step by step and not go into panic, not go into hysteria. But the assumption on the left is all about if you aren't running around with your hair on fire, then you're not doing anything. That is their argument, mostly impl implied, but definitely their argument. And I go through in here in detail, like while he was saying, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself, as FDR put it, he was also frantically doing things 
in great volume and content and, and effectiveness. And so that, that, is, that is the big thing. They, they almost act like, and, and they said the same thing about Reagan and AIDS, you may remember. We have AIDS because Reagan didn't care. If Reagan had just cared, then AIDS would have picked up and left. And, and, and in COVID-19, if, if, if Donald Trump just cared more, COVID would say, oh, well, then I'm not going to go to the United States because the president cares about it. That is the, the, the quality of argument. You'll notice that everything they say in this election is vague and ambiguous. So this is intended to penetrate the vagueness and get specific um, about, they said, well, he didn't, he didn't act early enough. Com based on what? What was the date he should have acted? What date would he should have known? When did he start to act? When you start to ask those specific questions, you find out that the attacks are false. Well, he, he banned travel from China almost immediately, and then he banned travel from Europe almost immediately. Uh, and even Nancy Pelosi was encouraging people to come to Chinatown as late as February and, and spread the virus, and she didn't care. Donald Trump cared first. So I'm with you on that. We have just one minute left. I wanna close our, with our audience in a word of prayer. Uh, Father in heaven, we ask your blessing now on anyone who's been affected by COVID. Uh, anyone who's lost a loved one, Father, we, we show compassion and we love uh, the people who uh, have been impacted by this. And Father, we ask now that you would continue to heal our nation uh, as Donald Trump's uh, quick and immediate decisive actions have possibly saved 2 million American lives now. Uh, we pray for those affected by the 200,000 plus deaths that have been uh, hurt by the COVID virus. Father, heal America and give justice, not only in Florida for the election, but give justice to the American people as we return to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Our guest has been Jonathan Mosley. His, his website is trumpcovidbook.com. Jonathan, thanks for coming on the program. Our website Thank is you, pray. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate when you visit. If you call us today for a donation of any amount, we will send you a Donald Trump prayer coin. Please call us at 866-Obey-God with your best donation, or just call us for prayer if you cannot donate. 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.